we can talk about how the solo thing sets up the group. Okay? And so the value of that is um, it gives you um, a very, number one, it gives you a, a, a nice way to present music. You know, any, 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 anyone who can play a little solo, either before or after a piece, like a cadenza, yeah. can do, can, can, can really make a nice contrast. It's beautiful. And it's a beautiful thing. So that's one thing. And the other thing is that good, strong solo playing really helps your jazz playing because when jazz <coughs> players solo, I don't, think I, I don't think I didn't mention this yesterday, actually. I, don't, I mentioned it on the first day, but not today. I didn't, yesterday I didn't mention it. A good jazz soloist always plays from internal time and internal harmony in an active way, not a passive way. Most younger players, and including myself when I was younger, or less experienced players play in a passive way from a perspective of the rhythm and the harmony. In other words, the rhythm section is playing and they respond to that by what they play. And most strong master soloists is the opposite. They bring the rhythm and they bring the harmony and the rhythm section goes with them. And it's an interaction, but the soloist leads it. That makes sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. So that, that skill is super important of developing your own sense of rhythmic and harmonic intent. So um, there are a bunch of skills that go with that. And they're the normal skills, but the attitude changes. The normal skills being, well, how do you make rhythm on your own? What does it take to make your own rhythm? And what does it take to make your own harmony? So the first thing it takes is knowledge of those things, like especially in the jazz style, knowledge of jazz harmony, knowledge of jazz rhythm, right? So then, like you heard me play, I did a thing, uh, the riff. Da da ba da 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 ba 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 da do da bo ba. So what I did, you some of you may even notice the form I played. I played a form. I'll play it for you again. Hand me my horn if you would. Feel comfortable touching that? Yeah. Very good. Well done. Not bad for guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> guitar players can sometimes be trusted. It's a beautiful thing. Sometimes. Just sometimes. Sometimes. Just sometimes. So. It was blues. It was blues, right? So. And you knew the blues. You knew it was the blues. Why? Because of the harmony we've heard. You could feel it. You could feel yeah. it based on the harmony, right? I played just a couple of notes that indicated the harmony of the blues, right? So all I did was I picked a couple of notes. I had rhythmic. I had, this is the this is the most basic version, or not the most basic, but a basic version of playing with rhythmic and harmonic intention. You can feel the rhythm. And everybody wants to jump right in. You want to jump right in, right? Everybody wants to do that. I've heard people already starting to play a little because that's right there. And so that, that skill is very important to play in such a way. Now, if I play that way, the rhythm section goes with me and everybody's grooving, right? And in, the, in a sense, all your playing should be th that way, not the same exact phrasing, but I mean, the goal is to play with such strong rhythm that people jump in with you. And the harmony sing. You play with enough harmonic intent that it's clear where you are, if you, know, if you, if you recognize the, the, the language of the harmony. If someone, you know, if someone has never heard this a blues before, they wouldn't know what it was, obviously. But if you heard a blues then you, and you've heard this kind of feeling, then you know that that's, that's what I was working from. And so that's a, a very important skill. And even certain, certainly playing solo, if, if I'm going to do that at the beginning of a blues, I have to set the blues up, you know, then the rhythm section will know where to come in, right? And so that's, or if I do it at the end of the blues, Whatever, it's, it's, it's clear that what I'm playing connects to it. Which is the key to playing cadenzas, is, 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 is playing something that connects to the song that you're playing. Both front and back. You can play a front cadenza or a back cadenza. The key thing to do is connect it to the piece in a creative way. 
and then there's a technique of just bringing people in and, and all that stuff, but which we, we, we'll go over that in just a second. But as far as the actual specific skill, I think that we all should do this on our instruments. Like we should just just do the riff thing. And I think you can do this on a saxophone too. You can do this same thing, and you should do this because if you want to learn the most important thing about jazz music, this is it. Ba -da, ba -ba. Ba, 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 ba. That's it. You got it. You got the groove. You got the harmony. You got the swing. That's it. That's the whole thing, really, in a nutshell. If you can get that going, we can we can feel that rhythm and practice it until you get it. Because you might not be able to get it at first. It sounds like it's easy. I didn't say that. It might not be easy, but it's pretty simple. I, I e not complicated. It's not complicated, but it's the most basic thing. And it doesn't it doesn't have to be that many notes. It's just a couple notes. You got it with just a couple of notes. Yeah. And what Cannonball says is. <laughs> You know, a cannonball would do that one. You know, so simple. That's a riff. I mean, the whole the whole swing era is based on riffs, and the riffs are simple things that just swing. Clap and sing first. So we'll go count it in. So we're in the form, right? Blues form. One, two. So we got the we got the basic idea of of creating time and creating harmony in a solo situation. We all did it together, but it's the same concept. If we did it by ourselves, it'd be the same. So when you're practicing it, the first thing you practice is is you essentially act like a rhythm section person. Basically, while well, everything we play is kind of like rhythm section stuff, like a riff is a rhythm section thing, and the one, three, fives, and sevens I was playing before that's kind of rhythm section kind of things, but they're also kind of melodic because they're linear. We're playing it by the line as opposed to vertically, like chorus, right? So if we can sing or play the stuff in a line, that's basically what I'm taking a solo, that's basically what I do. Except that it's more complicated, you know, the, I'm using more language because I know a lot more, you know, I've worked on, like, a lot of us who, who can already take solos can do the same thing. But the, here's the trick, is to have the mental attitude that you are now the leader of it. Okay? <laughs> Right? 
The idea is you feel your own groove, you keep your groove, right? Now, the key is to this is that even when you're in the rhythm section, your, your groove is still supposed to be strong at all times. And that's the, one, the other big lesson with this. So there's two lessons. One is um, just feeling it on a basic level and then connecting with the rhythm section eventually. And number two is taking, taking, t having, your, having your rhythm be the lead rhythm. And that's really what your goal is when you're improvising jazz music is to have your rhythm be the lead rhythm. Rather, cause sometimes what people will do is hear the rhythm section and lean on the rhythm section for rhythm because of the rhythm section. <laughs> so they provide rhythm and then not have their own rhythm. And what you want to do is as a jazz soloist, your optimum place is to lead the rhythm. One, two, mm, mm. Thank <laughs> you. 